What a great episode. It did an awesome job of developing the character of Killua, uh, Gon and his determination, and even Chairman Netero. The seventh episode of Hunter x Hunter this is. Showdown on the airship, it will be. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the next episode of the awesomely tantalizing, test-driven tale, a lot of T's in there, of Hunter x Hunter 2011. Now, of course, our last episode saw us with uh, really uh, it kind of narrowing the pack down from 50 to 42 and uh, and phase two going through and ultimately being completed. Uh, it ended up with, uh, of course, everybody just being on Chairman Netero, Netero, Netero? Yeah, Chairman Netero's uh, ship, because uh, he had obviously had to intervene and whatnot and uh, allow them to, you know, kind of retake that phase two exam. Uh, so nonetheless, we get uh, a really a lot of character exposition and background in this particular episode. It picks up uh, on the airship, and, uh, and and the chairman basically comes out, comes in front of everybody, and uh, his little fella, his assistant Beans, who honestly does he not look like a cute little glowworm? Honestly, I mean, am I the only one that when I was a kid, I had younger brothers and sisters that had the glowworm? I think the glowworm might still be around. It's you know, it, it squeezes its tummy and it glows, and it looks like a little caterpillar. You know, oh boy, just so cute. So anyway. Uh, nonetheless, so I get getting off track there. So, uh, so the chairman says, "Listen, normally I don't, you know, kind of interact with you until the last phase, but I'm already here anyway. So here's the deal: go get some rest, whatever. It's like eight, nine o'clock at night, something like that. Um, we're going to be at, at the site of phase three tomorrow morning at, at nine a.m. So everybody's dismissed, you know." And, uh, and then you wind up getting that little prick Tampa, uh, little, little chubby bastard that just does nothing but try to screw over rookies and stuff like that and has never passed the, the exam himself. And whether he intentionally fails at some point or whether his bullshit tricks backfire on him, I don't know. But the guy is really he's just starting to be a, a burr in my ass, you know, a fly in the ointment, uh, just a, a, a pain in the dick. Anyway, he um, so he goes and, and he finds uh, Corpica and uh, Liario, and he says, "Oh yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, because they're they're exhausted." And he's like, "Ah, I would be on your toes, you know, just because he said it's tomorrow at nine o'clock doesn't mean it's tomorrow at nine o'clock, you know. I mean, that might just be part of the test, you know, you know all these tests before the tests and the tests within the test." And he starts trying to freak him out, you know. Uh, so Liario and Corpica, they're they go and sit down in this room, or whatever, and they eventually just pass out anyway. So his little ruse didn't do shit, you know. <laughs> so sorry, Tompa, <laughs> you lose. But really, the character background that we pick up on is uh, is we see Killua and, and Gone, and uh, they're getting chased uh, out of the kitchen, you know, in, in the airship or whatever. And I wonder if, like, there's any any main character of any type of series, at least none that I've read or watched so far, that's not just, like, overly hungry all the time, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so they, they're getting kicked out of the kitchen. And we get a little background on Killua, and uh, Killua, his, he actually comes from a family of assassins, right? And when he tells Gone that, like, Gone believes him right off the bat, and Killua is like most people think I'm just joking when I when I say that you know uh, but no he, he literally he just kind of wanted out he didn't want to have his life predetermined and kind of live by those rules and everything else because as far as I know uh, I don't know about in this particular series but you know assassin would be more of like a, you know like a black ops underground type of thing you know operating outside of the laws and, and those sort of things so I guess he decided to basically tell his family yeah, take one of these, take two of them actually, and uh, and I'm I'm gonna go off and, and take the hunter exam, and then he, he claims that he like stabbed his mother in the face and his brother in the side of the head or something like that. <laughs> and I, was, I don't know if he was actually serious about that part, but there was obviously a falling out over it, and he's he's gonna be a straight up assassin now. So, and then he's talking about how <laughs> once he becomes uh, once he becomes a, a, a I'm sorry a hunter once he becomes a hunter, um, you know he'll be able to have the means and the resources, and he'll be able to basically bring in his family. And he's sure there's probably big bounty on him, you know. So we get this background on Killua, which I thought was really cool. And then him and Gon, as they're sitting there just kind of looking out in amazement outside the airship window, uh, Chairman Netero appears, you know, and he goes and appears, but then kind of goes and like uses this, whatever his skills are, he just basically like, just like beams quickly to the other side of the room, like the flash, you know. And Killua picks up on it, even Gon's like, hey, weren't you just there, you know? But anyway, the chairman, though, the bottom line is he comes and, he, and he's asking them, hey, what do you guys think of, uh, you know, so far of the exam? You guys are rookie, you know, rookies taking the exam for the first time. What do you think so 
so far. And Gon's like, oh, it's a lot of fun and blah, blah. And Killua's like, yeah, I wish it would be harder. <laughs> you know, so I, I, was, I, I was expecting more, you know. So I'm like, oh, boy, boy's got balls, right? So the chairman goes and says, listen, I'll challenge you to, uh, you know, it's, it's later at night now. I don't know, maybe it's 11, 12 o'clock. Uh, and, of course, they don't have anything going on until the next day at 9 in the morning. He goes, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I'm going to do it like a little challenge, a game with you guys or whatever. And if you guys want to partake in it, you have until the phase three of the exam starts. If you can take this ball from me, this basketball or whatever, um, you know, you can, you, you'll be hunters. You'll just pass automatically, right? So they wind up both taking him up on this offer. And it's funny because this Netero, uh, you know, when you see him at first, he just, he, I mean, he's got this longer beard and everything like that. And it's like a Fu Manchu mustache deal. He just looks like this older, like, you know, 90 year old dude that's, you know, <laughs> that's been in charge of this shit forever. Doesn't look spry at all. Well, anyway, Killawa goes and takes the first crack at him and can't even touch him, man. I mean, he's trying it because the whole rules of it is that he can't attack them. He can only dodge, but they have to try to get the ball out of his hand, right? And he and, and Killawa's trying to kick him and this and that and dodge. And then Killawa actually goes in and you can see just kind of that uh, that crazed, I, I wouldn't call it psychotic, but yeah, it probably is close to psychotic for this young kid, the mentality. He goes and comes at him and he's like, all right, fine, you want to move real quick? I'll take out your leg. So Killawa comes at him with this slide kick and just bam, jacks up his leg. And then Killawa winds up, you know, thinking, oh, I got him, right? And then a couple seconds later, all of a sudden, he's like, oh, oh, his leg is like iron. So this chairman, whatever his deal is, and I don't know if it's just like, you know, he's just got strong inner peace. He's got some Bruce Lee shit going on. Or if this dude has like some otherworldly powers where he can just like straight up like harden parts of his body. I'm not really sure because they don't, they don't tell you at this point. All I know is that he, the chairman says to himself, he's like, he was going into, you know, it, basically if it wasn't me, if it was somebody normal, he would have shattered my leg, you know. So Killawa was going in for the kill, right? I mean, he was going in, it's all or nothing with this kid. Um, so it's definitely kind of neat to see. And then Killawa goes and takes another crack at him and he starts doing this cool rhythm something move. And it looks like there's a bunch of Killawas. And Gon's like, oh, look, there's many Killawas. <laughs> I just thought it was funny, you know, because he's all amazed. And, um, it, you know, and then uh, the chairman explains that, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's an assassin technique that he learned. But for him to have mastered it at such a young age is is really, um, it's really something to behold, you know. So anyway, then he goes, he says, why don't you guys go and, and both attack me at once, you know. So they do. They start coming at him both at the same time and just can't get anything on him. And, uh, and I mean, this guy's not even trying. I mean, he's just dodging, jumping, moving, you know, and they cannot, they can't get the ball at all, right. Um and Gon initially had come at him. He couldn't do anything either. He just wound up missing. At first, he went and he did this jump, and he wound up hitting the ceiling. His head on the ceiling was really goofy. But then they start using teamwork, and Gon starts realizing that since he's anticipating his moves and he knows what he's going to do, Gon goes and jumps at him to go and, and, and attack him. And then he goes and he kicks his boot off at the last second to nail him with the boot and to kind of you know to kind of knock him back because he wasn't expecting that, right? So he's using some tactics that may be considered underhanded, but I think it's just, you know, it's inventive, man. Listen, you know, if this guy's reading everything else you're doing and you have to go at him this way, so be it. You know, it's it's all about winning. That's the name of the game, right? So it's kind of cool because they actually get to the point where they almost take the ball from him. But this uh, this Netero, man, he is crazy, crazy fast, crazy strong uh, because they go in the, and, and as they use some different moves and start working as a team to try to take him out, the ball gets knocked out of his hands a couple of times. And just as it's within, you know, the, the reach of Killua or Gone, you know, he comes and swoops in and gets it. And I mean, the last, the last one is, I mean, they're both like Superman diving towards it in slow motion, you know, and he just comes in like a bat out of hell, man, like a fucking indie car drive, you know, and just grabs this thing. And as he grabs it and it runs across the ground, it literally just like makes like a burn streak in the floor, you know. So Killawa goes, and at that point, he's just like, screw this, man, I'm done, I'm giving up, you know, and it's, I don't know, like 1, 2 in the morning, something like that, and Gon's like, what do you mean, we still got time left, we've only used up half the time, and Killawa's like, he hasn't even used his right hand or his left leg yet, this guy's been just like straight up just standing on his right leg, pivoting, moving around, and only using his one hand to dodge and move, so he's not even trying, so Killawa's like, he basically is ta he tasked us with this impossible game, and maybe just to test us or or whatever. But but the bottom line is, I'm not gonna burn up all my freaking energy trying to do this all night long and then not be able to pass the test because of it. So it's that mental mind game stuff. And I don't know if it's that the chairman was just he saw that there were younger participants and he thought, hey, I'm gonna see what they're made of, or what his deal was, or if he just really kind of wanted to get to know some of the participants better. I, I don't know. Anyway, um. 
but so so Killua goes and takes off. Of course, he's he's pissed off. You know, back to the to the matter at hand, the the main part of the story. And Gon's like, you know what? I'm gonna stick around for a while. And Killua's like, why, you idiot? I just told you we can't beat him. You know. And he's like, no, I'm gonna make him use his right hand. See, Gon realizes that at this point he can't defeat uh, the chairman. That he can't actually get the ball. But it's it's baby steps, man. Like I can't go from here to here, but I can go from here to here and progress. And if I can get him to at least make an effort and have to use his right hand, it's a win in my book, right? And I really like that. I like his mentality when you go at it like that because if you t if you take a huge insurmountable task, yeah, sure, it's it's very difficult. You know what I mean? I want to be ruler of this. I want to be president. Of this, I want to be an astronaut. Yeah, that's great. But you have to go and take small steps to go and make that happen and try to climb that plateau, to climb that mountain, so to speak, and then bring you a little closer each time to that goal. So I really liked how Gone did that, and there was a really great life lesson I thought in there. So anyway, so Gone comes at him. You know, he comes at him. It's just, you know coming at him, trying to get the ball from. He winds up coming at him with this flying headbutt and just straight up boom, right into his stomach, and he, you know he just collapses and bounces off of it. Take so Gon goes to come at him again, and the chairman's like, you know, if he he hits me again, here he's gonna crack his freaking skull, you know. So at the last minute, the chairman goes, and he, the chairman's like, but if I, you know, soften up or whatever, and if I allow him to hit me, I'll I'll take a serious blow over here, you know. <laughs> so maybe he'll lose his lunch. I don't know, you know. <laughs> so maybe he'll shit himself, whatever. But so Gon goes to come at him that second time, and at the last second, the chairman goes and he's like, and kind of jumps over him, you know. Uh, but Gon goes flying into the wall, smashes into the wall, and is laying there for a second. The chairman's like, oh my god, is he dead? <laughs> Gon gets up, his head's all, forehead's all red and shit, and he's just smiling. And the chairman's like, what the hell? And Gon's like, I made you use your right hand. <laughs> and the chairman looks down and son of a bitch, if he didn't have to use his right hand to vault over Gon to dodge out of his way. So Gon's just like, hey man, that is a win for me, you know? And it's great because then you see this kid, he's so exhausted from everything phase one and phase two going like that did back to back, and then now being on this airship and, you know, tangling with him for hours, he just fucking just passes out where he is, you know? So it was really cool to see. And then you wind up seeing a little bit of kindness at the end of the episode from uh, from the chairman. He, he radios the airship uh, pilot and he says, hey, listen, you know, I know this will inconvenience you, but but get, get to the destination site a little bit slower for phase three. So he really, I think, had some admiration and respect for Gone that the kid kept coming at him. And even though he knew, instead of like Killua just getting pissed off and giving up, and then Killua too, as he's walking down the hall, a couple of guys, you know, like bumped into him and said that he bumped into them and they're walking up behind him to grab him and the next thing you know they're just both dropped on the ground so i don't know if he just knocked them out if he freaking slit their throats i mean after all this kid is this crazy little skateboard riding assassin now that we found out so definitely a very cool episode though and i thought it was touching what the chairman did as well um you know kind of having some respect and some kindness towards going and, and really going and saying hey you know what this kid's really got something special so and uh, and I, like i said i'm just enjoying the ride man good stuff good stuff so episode question here is what what do you think about Killua and what we found out so far about his background and history with the assassin, uh, family of assassins and that sort of thing? So leave your answer in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Me and this young lady here would sure appreciate it if you'd follow me over on the Twitter and the Facebook.